morning everyone. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Guten tag. Buongiorno. <laughs> Dobro dan. Kalimera. I'm out. <laughs> morning everyone. How are you all? <sighs> I hope you're well. I am coming to you the day after storm Dennis. Things have calmed down a bit. I'm just looking out the window. Still blowing a hoolie out there, but at least the rain has stopped. What a wet winter. So I was speculating a little bit the other day with a friend, uh, sort of just writing to a friend, that I'm going to do some seed sowing today. That's why we're here in the kitchen, some indoor sowing. But I'm not... How to put it? I'm not really feeling it. I don't feel in the groove. Something just doesn't feel right at the moment. And as I said, I was speculating with this friend. I think it's because I feel like we haven't had winter yet. Now I know that's going to sound stupid because obviously we have, and we're nearly out the other side of it. But it's been so mild this year, and I know I've gone on about this all winter, but. It really does impact me. So it's been mild, but it's been so wet. We've had so many really grey days, low, low, dark clouds, and we're either being deluged with rain or when it's not raining, we've still got those low clouds. So I've really missed those kind of crisp, fresh, frosty days. We've only really had a couple of hard frosts. Uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. I missed them both. So I haven't had those days outside of feeling winter, of being in winter where, for instance, I think I've worn my woolly hat once this winter, once, it's crazy. So I haven't had those days of being really wrapped up and snuggly and loads of layers of clothes, but being outside in that gorgeous winter brightness just getting on with things so i think it's a combination of a couple of things i think the fact that i've not had that plus i've hardly had any days outside either in the garden or i mean i've had i go outside every single day running errands and what have you but i haven't had that sort of quality outdoor time so i've got to this stage in the year and i don't feel ready to be planting any seeds it's really odd it feels like my my internal clock is out of whack yeah that's what it is normally i think i would have all those days outside during the winter and obviously as those as each day goes by outside one observes buds forming on the trees and bushes the you know the the what do you call them the the spring bulbs poking through and I've seen that a little bit of course but not in that thing of seeing it two or three times a week feeling that build towards spring and and having that sense of it gathering inside of me too where that sort of internal clock tells me it's time to start sewing so uh yeah it just feels odd this year and i think if you're a first time gardener you won't necessarily have that anyway you're probably going to be doing your sewing according to you know you've gone through all your packets and written down the dates for sewing that sort of thing with a bit of flexibility bearing in mind what the weather and what the light is doing <clears throat> but after years of growing i i don't really sort of look at I don't really sort of, how to put it, I don't really follow a plan in terms of, I look at my calendar and I go, oh, I need to sew such and such today. I mean, I do, I do make a note of that, but generally I sew because I just sense or I feel it's the right time to sew. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not feeling it, but I'm going to do it. 
this is my first indoor sewing. This is the earliest sewing I'll do. I won't do another indoor sewing uh, for about a month or so. Uh, oh, yes, sorry, just to say before I do start sewing, I see I'm all over the place. Um, Richard and Paul were talking about the joy of random gifting during their Sunday chat at the weekend. And uh, I heartily agree. I think random gifting is beautiful and wonderful. To get a gift outside of one's birthday or Christmas, there's no expectation of it. It just turns up how wonderful. And I mean, I love to do that for other people. I, I am a recipient so many times because of you beautiful, wonderful people. So uh, I want to say a big thank you to Suzanne over in Italy. Hello Suzanne. And Phil in North America. Hey Phil. And Nancy N in North America. I'm going to have to say Nancy N because I have three lovely Nancys in my life now. Anyway, the three of them have randomly gifted me some money to go towards compost this year. <sighs> Thank you so much. I'm going to use a bit of it today. So yeah, your random gifts, letters, cards. I love them, absolutely love them. I hope you know that by now. Right, so without further ado, I'm gonna do two things today. I'm going to sow my pepper seeds and I'm going to take some cuttings from my pelargonium, which is over in the window, uh, window, my mother plant. Plus, you can see that I've got a couple of my other smaller plants which I've overwintered and they need a little bit of attention, so I'm going to do that this morning too. First of all, pepper seeds. So, <laughs> I, as you all know by now, I don't have a greenhouse. Um, I Obviously, I've got the cold frame. It's quite chilly cold frame, it's a cold frame, which I use mostly for hardening things off. I don't generally use the cold frame for starting things because it's just too chilly. So I do start some things indoors. The peppers definitely need starting indoors. They need a long time to get going. So the peppers I'm gonna sow today, for example, with the orange bell, which are a wonderful pepper for growing outdoors. So that's the other thing, because I don't have a greenhouse, I have to grow peppers which can be grown outdoors and put up with the English summer, which sometimes can be baking hot and drought-like, and other times can be cool and damp. So these the, the varieties I'm sowing today are all suitable for growing outside, but they do need a long time, so, here we are, middle of February. Some of these I won't be harvesting until the beginning of October, mid-September to the beginning of October. It takes them that long to, well, they produce their fruits by about June, end of June, no, end of July, but it takes them that time to ripen and go that beautiful deep orange for the orange bell or the gorgeous, glossy deep deep red of both the Doulon de Londe, that's my long skinny pepper, and my Feher Ozen, which is my Hungarian paprika pepper. So, because I need to start them indoors, ideally, if you look at packets, books, what have you, uh, it will invariably say that they need 25 degrees centigrade to germinate. What's that in Fahrenheit? Double it, 50, add 30. So about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have that. So in the flat, my flat is generally, it hovers around 18, 19 degrees. Uh, on a really sunny day in winter, with all that sun on my south facing window, it can get up to sort of 24, 25 degrees in here. But generally speaking, I'm hovering at 20 or just below. So I always start them in my propagator. Now the other thing, some of you who've been watching me for a couple of years now will know that, um, and this isn't a judgment on anyone else and how everyone else does things, but I try to do all my growing 
as far as possible with nature without too much input from me let me explain um so i don't use artificial lights i don't use heat pads heat mats heated propagators i'm trying to do all of this without using electricity without using up other resources i know there are some people who've got no choice because if they didn't use those means they simply wouldn't have a garden <laughs> I can just about get away with it. So, I use my little lidded propagators, so they're not gonna be heated. These will then sit in my south facing window. And in that window during the day, the combination of the warmth of the sun through the window, plus the lid to help keep some of the warmth, it should get them to about 22, 23 during the day. And I found the last few years, that actually it works. It works fine with no additional heat or light. During the daytime, once they're germinated, during the daytime, I'll open the vents on the top. But even once they're germinated, I tend, unless it's a really warm, bright day, I tend to keep the lid on. And then at night, especially for these first few weeks, because the nighttime temperature in my flat does drop, it will get down to about 16. So I have my bubble wrap handy. This is, can you see it's got a slight green tinge to it? So this is bubble wrap made from recycled plastic. This is what, I try to recycle bubble wrap as much as possible and get spare bubble wrap from other people for using for my shop. But every now and again, I do need to buy some. So I've, I've gone over to this now, which is great. So literally at night time, I will just, Give it a duvet just to give it that extra little bit of protection during the night and like i said i've been doing it this way for the last three or four years and it works perfectly well and let's just pop that out of the way for a second and i get perfectly good crops <laughs> but it is playing the long game right so let's quickly get some of these sewn so that then we can uh, get on with the pelagoniums and hopefully just the act of doing this today I'm hoping it's going to sort of trigger something in my brain something in my chemistry to tell me yes yes we are getting into a new growing year and I do need to start feeling this sort of organic feeling I get each year of it's time it's time right let's get on and sew Ooh, here we go. So I'm just going to start with my orange bell, which is a sweet pepper. These are all a sweet pepper to some degree. I don't, I don't do sort of chili peppers. I don't do that kind of heat. But this is about the time if you want to grow chilies. This is about the time you'll be getting them started too. So these are all saved seeds from last year. That beautiful little treasures. Um, they're such an easy seed to save for yourself. So allow your for seed saving. Now, sorry, I should have just said these are an orange pepper. You can eat them when they're still green. It's just that they're a little bit, well, a fair bit more bitter rather than sweet when they're still green. For seed saving, you want to save seed from your orange ones. You want that fruit to be as mature as possible because that gives the seeds the proper time they need to develop. So I'm just, I'm using these small, um, what's that, about four centimeter pot. I'm putting two in each. So I'm frequently asked about, you know, how many plants do I need for this, that, the other. It's something you can only really work out over a couple of years. You know, what's your, how much do your family eat? What do they like to eat, etc., etc. So ideally, I would like about 15 plants to come to fruition. So I'm going to sow uh, three, six, nine, twelve pots, twelve pots of two. So in theory, I'll have twenty-four plants. 
of which hopefully 15 will be good ones for me to plant in the garden. If they all do really well, I can either try and find a bit more space in the garden for them, a pot on the deck even, uh, and if I've really got no more space, then fine, I will give plants away to plot neighbours, as I pretty much do every year. So when I put the soil in the pots, just to say, I've tamped down that soil a bit, so it's I haven't done it hard, I'm not compacting it, but I'm just stopping it from being loose and having loads of air pockets in. And then just the merest sprinkle to cover them. They're only a, oops, chunky compost. They're only a little seed, so we don't want to bury them like we would a bean, for example. I need to give them a bit of a water actually, this compost is quite dry. This is my, I'll get on with that in a second. This is my favourite little indoor for seedlings watering can. You may have seen the watering cans I use in the garden, my beautiful metal ones. So this is the same make, it's by Hawes. Let me see that, I don't know if you can. Look, they are not the cheapest. Uh, watering cans. In fact, they're probably the most expensive watering cans on the planet. So this one, for example, I think it was about eight pounds, which, like I say, no, it is not cheap for a watering can, but they last forever. And I think they have something like a 25 year guarantee with them. What I love about this one is it comes with a rose and it has this handy <laughs> little storage knob on it. So, for example, once the plants get established and they're a bit bigger, I'll just water using the spout. But for when they're little teeny tiny babies, I'll use the rose. I don't know if you can see how, it's a bit grubby, isn't it, how fine that is. But yeah, I will just give them all a light watering in a minute. Just settle them in, give them enough moisture to get going. Once the when the little seedlings come up and they're really, really fine, tiddly seedlings to start with, I'll, I'll, I'll top water with the rose to begin with really carefully around them just because they haven't got the roots down there to get the water just yet. But as they're getting more established for watering, I'll just literally water into the whole tray, the bottom of the tray, and that's going to encourage the roots as well to, to go down, find that water, and give me good strong plants. So I will get this finished. Um, the other ones I'm sewing, like I said, are the Doulon de Londe, which is the long skinny French one. They're going to go in there. I've got another tray ready for my paprika peppers, the Vahar Ozen. Don't know how it's pronounced, sorry if that's wrong. Get all those done, give them a bit of moisture, get the lids on, set them in my south facing window. And then it'll be time to start playing with the geraniums. So let me finish this and then we'll get the geraniums out. Here's my mother plant. <laughs> my goodness, I've got to step all the way back here to show you. Oh my goodness. She's gone leggy. Now, you might think, Oh my goodness, she's been struggling for light all winter. But next to her, in exactly the same spot, well, a few centimetres over, we've also had this one. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason to it. I think this is my white one, so this is really precious. So this is one of my overwintered ones. Uh, let's just set you back down there a second. And this one, uh, it didn't go into the garden last year. It was at home the whole time. On the kitchen windowsill, and at times in the living room, in the front windowsill, where it's really, really bright and sunny, so it was not lacking light. But yeah, she's just gone mental. But actually, that's okay for the job I want to do today, because I'm gonna take a load of cuttings from her, and <laughs> because, <laughs> There's so much space between each leaf node, it's perfect for A, taking cuttings and B, demonstrating that to you today. So let's just have you 
hold on a second, on the newspaper. It really could not be more simple. So, I'm just going to pop her down a sec again. I started my geraniums off three years ago, I think it is, uh, with seed. They are notoriously difficult to get to germinate. So I think, and also just to say the organic seed wasn't cheap. It's one of the most expensive flower seeds I've ever bought. I think I got 20 seeds and I think it was about £3.50. So, you know, it's quite a lot of money for just for flowers, but I do love, I keep saying geraniums. We all know that I mean pelagoniums, so please don't anyone shout at me. So I started them off as seeds three years ago. And from those 20 seeds, I think about 10 germinated. So that first winter of those 10, I think I remembered to bring six home. There were four that I forgot, they were in the trough. Exactly the same has happened this year. They all got killed off um, in, during the frosty bits. But what's wonderful about these plants is once you've got those seeds to germinate, once you've got your plants underway, essentially you're going to have free plants for life. So I'm going to show you one another one in a second. Even when the plant starts to look really tired and straggly and perhaps a little ugly, take cuttings from it and use that little ugly stump, as this one was, Shh, don't tell her, and just keep your ugly one set aside as a mother plant. You know, <laughs> she, she isn't the best looking specimen, she's all um, and floppy everywhere. But yeah, uh, free plants for life essentially. And I think, I don't know how much they cost, but I think probably early in the season you get those kind of six packs from the local DIY stores or garden centres or whatever, and that's sort of a couple of quid, isn't it? Take your own cuttings, it's free. Right, shut up about all that, Vivian, do your cuttings. I need to get some water, bear with me a second. I'm back with the water. I need the water to root them in. Let's pop that aside for a second. So, on your plant, <laughs> to see all the way up there. I'm looking, I'm looking for, can, you can't even see that, can you? I'm gonna have to tip you up. Hang on, let's see if I can tip you up towards the sky. Oh, crunchy, crunchy, here we go. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, look at that light behind it. So, where I've got, I'll show you closer on one lower down. Where I've got these two leaves here, oh, and I've left my blooming knife in the shed. Where I've got these two leaves here, I'm going to cut just above them. Don't flop back over. So, I need to bring you back down. This is daft, isn't it, today? Okay. So, there were my two leaves. I've cut just above the leaves. Here's my next leaf. And I'm going to give it a cut just below the leaf. So in other words, when you're taking your cuttings, the space between two leaf nodes, we remove. Does that make sense? And I'm gonna get rid of this leaf and this leaf, because I don't want them to be under the level of the water. And I'm quite simply gonna pop it in a jar of water. And I'm gonna leave it like that for the next five, six, seven, eight weeks, and it will start to root. So you need to keep an eye on your water level, and if it's getting a bit low, top it up. So I think I might try and get another one from there. Yeah, ideally I should be doing this with a nice, clean, sharp knife. So underneath the leaf node, oh, it's gone flying. Take those leaves off don't need those, pop it in the water. So as you can see from this plant, I've got one, two, three, four, five really good leading stems, as it were. So from this one plant alone, I will hopefully get 
five brand new plants. So I'll do that with pretty much, yeah, I'll do that with pretty much all the plants where there is good new growth like this. Do you want? So this one, this mother plant, once I finish doing this process, it is going to look a bit sad and bare. But what always amazes me is just how much they come back time and time again. She's having a haircut. <laughs> her haircut is definitely... Oops, that's just snapped. Never mind. I'll still put that bit in. Yeah, definitely better haircut than I gave myself. Where should we have you from? And the other thing, I don't know if this is... I just do this instinctively. When they're in the pot like this, if they show, show any signs of starting to want to put a little flower stalk out, I always take it off because I don't want it putting its energy into producing a flower. I want it to put its energy into producing its roots. Right, let me set this aside a sec because I just want to show you on these two, also overwintered. Okay, I wonder if you can make out in this one. Can you see just in the bottom there? Oh, light. I don't know if you'll be able to make it out. I don't want to tip it all. Just in here, my little finger is. That's two uh, little random self seeded uh, chamomile. So, can you see on the stem here? See, it's bifurcated there. This uh, growth here, I grabbed this one just before winter kicked in and it was really dying back, so I took that off. And then that little stem has now, if I turn it this way, you might be able to see. Can you see that has now bifurcated so it's producing two it's a bit tricky to show it's producing two new stems off that one old stem so they're really quite short and stumpy i'm not going to take any cuttings i'm going to just leave it to gather its strength again but like i said i think this is my white one and i've only got one white and i adore the white it's so beautiful you know, we see a lot of the red. I'm not a huge fan of the red. I mean, I love it if I see it when I'm in Europe, in the Mediterranean, because it, it works so well under that gorgeous, bright Mediterranean summer light. But I just think in the UK, I don't know, it looks a bit tarty to me, it looks a bit brash. So most of mine are pinks. I've got a sort of a pale pink and a deep pink, and that one precious white one. Ah, so now this one, can you see it's really do you know what i need to do i need to move this one out of the way because you're seeing it in the back aren't you let me just pop it here so then you can see more clearly hopefully what i'm talking about so this one you can see this is this shoot has really come on well over the winter as has this one so it's got two really strong shoots this is all just died back right at the very bottom of it it's where there were leaf nodes it's starting to produce two brand new shoots so for now all i'm going to do i'm going to just cut out i really need my snips i'm just going to cut out all that dead stuff doesn't need it and then give it a little bit of a of all these leaves that have died back doesn't need them it doesn't the plant doesn't need to be thinking about putting any energy into this dead stuff get rid of it all let it focus its energy so hopefully it's clearer now that's one new stem over winter that's another and then right there in the middle can you see one two new stems from that old dead bit because this this has obviously had a bit of a struggle over the winter and it's only just coming back to life now. I'm not going to take any cuttings from it. Just leave it alone to get going again. And it really, really will. And it may be that once we get into the summer and this is on the deck and it's happily growing away, I may take a couple of cuttings in the summer. 
So that's the thing as well with the pelargonium. You can take a cutting pretty much any time of the year. So if you don't have any plants at the moment, but you buy some, for example, towards the end of the summer, let them get established, but towards the end of the summer, as we just go into autumn, think about getting some cuttings from them or leave them alone, bring them home to overwinter and then take your cuttings in the spring. Just keep taking your cuttings and getting your free plants. So yeah, I'm, I'm now gonna go through all the plants I've brought home to overwinter, excuse me. Um, see which ones of them, if they've got four or five good leading shoots, I might take one from each plant. I might take a couple. Any that are in this sort of stage, I'll just leave alone and just let them put it on a bit of weight. Basically, I'm gonna look at that mother plant again because I think there's way more cuttings I can get from that. But essentially, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, quickly snipped off from that mother plant. So I'm gonna have at least five new plants this year. I'm gonna try and get 20 new ones. We'll see. Right then. Huh. Oh, I think maybe <laughs> I might be starting to feel it. Just about. You know as well it's that um it's that gorgeous scent of geranium leaves, isn't it? Oh, it just takes me back to my grandparents' lean to, which is oh where they did all of theirs. Yum yum yum. Scent memories, gorgeous. Right, I need to get the rest of these done, cleared up, I've got somewhere to be. So for now, I'm going to say cheerio to you all. I do hope that you fared well during these recent storms and oh my goodness, let's hope that was the last of them. I don't think it is, but uh, you know, hopefully over the next few weeks, we'll have some dry days get back out to the garden. Look, I think even if over the next two weeks we've got some decent dry days, we're, we're gonna have to be a bit careful about what work we do in the garden because the ground is gonna be so saturated. I think we all need to leave the ground alone for a while. Um, so yeah, we're probably all itching to get going, aren't we? But we're gonna have to be patient for a little while longer. Hmm, we'll see. Hopefully the next time you see me though, I will be back outside. So until then, cheerio, take care of yourselves and each other and find some fun, find some fun things to do indoors if you can. Bye for now.